you who don't know me, I'm Melissa Cole. Uh, I'm a beer and food writer. Um, I have been working in the industry for uh, 20 years now. It will be in spring next year. Um, and uh, beer and food has been somewhat of a passion, uh, basically some greedy bitch mostly, but uh, it's been a passion of mine for a long time, mostly because I've um, seen so many bad dishes or tasted so many bad dishes, some of which were made by me, I'm not going to lie. Um, and also I just feel that if we're going to be really genuine and true about actually trying to push beer forward onto dining tables, onto, onto you know, onto restaurants where we go, where we'd like to see it, then we actually have to know as much about it as when we're cooking with it, as we're doing, when we're pairing with it, uh, because actually then we can talk people's languages. So I normally actually end, I start off with relationships with chefs, um, tonic, I hasten to write, just in case anybody's filming this as well. Um, and uh, it's really important actually, you know, that taste and flavor thing. And my real sort of, uh, sort of dumpster dive into this started off when I read a magazine and uh, it had this steak and ale pie recipe, which looked amazing. And then when I turned to the recipe, it said beer. <laughs> and this was about sort of 10, 11 years ago now. Um, and if you think about how far we've come in that time, I, mean, I imagine there's some of you in the audience who weren't even allowed to drink at that time, let alone anything else. Uh, I'm feeling really sorry for myself today. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, so, um, so, but it's actually, it's really important that, that, that actually we say, hang on a minute, this isn't good enough. We need to raise our voices politely. You see, somebody who receives a fair stick of online abuse, so I would really encourage politely. Um, sometimes you have to shout loudly, but still politely. Sometimes if you like me and you lose your rag and just swear at people, but it's fine. So, um, but we need to raise our voices to actually get people to understand that this is a thing. Like, so for example, I worked with a Michelin star chef um, quite extensively, a guy called Alan Williams, who's just one of the most fabulous people. Uh, when I first met him, he'd just had his beer epiphany uh, with, a, with a brewery tour I'd organised for him, and he was really super excited. He had no idea of the breadth of flavours in the beer world. And I had the great privilege of putting together a really, um, a really rare beer goose island event with him as well. And to say that he completely like mind blown when he tasted things like the liter and all the sours and, and things like Pepe Nero, their dark their dark saison. He just he was just he just sat there in the kitchen for about ten minutes and just said, I, I just I don't even know where to start, but I'm so excited. So we can try and push that out into the world. If you know chefs, if you have chef mates, if they aren't really into it, get them to taste things and they need them to go from there, but make sure they push it through to their sommeliers as well. So anyway, what we're gonna do today is I want to do two dishes. I want to make sure there's uh, something to case for veggies. Are any veggies in the room? Yeah, okay, there's normally veggies. I'm sorry, I can't do vegan today. Um, I'm not very good at vegan food, full stop, actually, I'll be really honest with you, but I'm, 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 I've tried for a few things in the new book. Um, but we have got a veggie dish and we have got a carnivore's dish as well. So, what I'm actually going to start off with, however, is um, some quick pickles. Have you made quick pickles? Yeah? They're great. And you can bake them in sour beer. And the good thing is, is it also means that there's things I don't need to drink at the same time. It's basically pretty much the premise of most of my book. <laughs> but, uh, one for the pot, one for the chef, and, and that's not usually quite the ratio either. If you're wondering why I'm putting that on, it's because I've lost the guard for my mandolin. Has anybody ever cut themselves on a mandolin? You only do it once, don't you? Yes, I don't know what, unless Freddie and Yuri English and Rick Holmes are in there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two of them. Helps if I actually open up the plate, doesn't it? So, I'm just going to get some cucumber first. So, these cut fruit gloves, by the way, are a lot easier to use than most of the uh, mandolin blades. So what I've already prepared in here is a little bit of sugar, I've used honey, I have honey with me, um, and uh, some salt. Although it is actually comedy uh, margarita salt that I bought by accident years ago. I thought I should turn around and use that damn stuff, so I will. So what I've done is I've put some hot water in there um, with some sugar and some salt. And what I'm doing now is I'm putting the cucumber in and I'm going to put some wakame in as well. Do you know what wakame is? No, it's dried seaweed. So you don't need a lot of it, it's literally a pinch because it expands. So it's a bit like, I think of it like a, it's basically an umami bomb. And there's a lot, the reason why it's called uh, the art and science of uh, cooking and pairing with beer is because I like to cheat. 
<laughs> if you can cheat, you should. Because it just means that you're more intelligent than the next person. So, that's my excuse, I'm sticking to it. So, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to um, use that seaweed to put a load of umami in there. So, umami, the big flavour. I get a very excitable hippie banana, which has been sitting in a car with me for two and a quarter freaking hours. <laughs> Accident on the West Way, gridlock around um, around Old Street and uh, Great Eastern, so that was a nightmare. So I'm just going to give that a little stir with this excitable foam there, and I'm just going to pop a little tiny bit of rice wine vinegar inside. So, there we go. Obviously, there are measurements for this. <laughs> <laughs> However, I've done this so many times now that I don't need to. And frankly, as long as you get a decent amount of sugar and a decent amount of salt in there. <laughs> yeah, see, this is, uh, I, 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 I've actually, I, I had to steal myself very, very hard when I was doing all the recipe testing to make sure I actually adhered to my own recipes, <laughs> which is embarrassing to say, but there we go. I actually don't, I think that there's a lot of things, unless you're talking about some of the sort of more technical stuff, that's, uh, so the book's broken up into simple sum effort and show off. There's some things like making a pork pie where, you know, if you don't have the right amount of jelly or you don't put the right amount of hot water to lard to uh, to um, flour in, in the pastry, then frankly, you're going to have a very large porky disaster on your hands. That's not as much fun as it sounds. So, <laughs> there we go. So what I'm doing here is I've got some red onion. So same mix in the base, sugar, salt, and then we're going to stick some fruit creek on there. Um, just so you know, if you do want to just soften down onions and you don't want to go to all this fat, uh, you don't want them to be quite that harsh onion bites, then if all you do is a bit of hand warm water, some sugar, some salt, and leave them so for sort of 10-15 minutes, you'll take all of that harshness out of them. Okay, I'll pop those back there. They can sit merrily while I do everything else. I shall uh, divest myself of my Michael Jackson impression. There we go. So, some of the 
you guys cannot do is I will take the gum back out of this first. I'm really difficult to use the cold pan as well. So I don't want to pick out that much. And then you'd like to pass the jar around so that people can smell it. Um, so they smell really, really lemony, they're really, really, but they've got this really kind of numbing effect. Um, and I really like that numbing effect, so I use loads. However, obviously, as I said earlier, that's a piece to be bugging about with. If this basically stops your tongue working, then use less citron energy. Well, citron pepper, sorry. I clearly can't multitask today. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit jet lagged. So, um, which is not just because I've come from South West London, but I did get my, I did get my shops, obviously. Um, but I just landed from Brazil, which is why I also hate the people at the back of the uh, eater. <laughs> so, although the general smug I've just landed from Brazil probably makes you hate me. <laughs> so, uh, I, can, I can see that. Um, so we're running out of space a little bit, so I'll leave the other two. So the good thing about this one is it really genuinely is not a difficult dish. It doesn't take too long. You can just leave it go. Um, and you don't have to worry too much about how it will so make it pretty. You don't need to do any of that. Right, so what I'm doing now is just so that I don't kill you all, I will measure this one out. Because I'm, I'm quite happy to just go Bee! So you want to pass that around that side and have a, have a whiff. So, popping that, some more of that wakame, because again, we like to cheat. And some more of my hilarious yellow salt, wherever that is, there it is, how did I miss it? Okay, not too much, it's just kind of there as a, as a coarse grinding tool. It's, you know, give it a go. It can 
it, it's never really going to hurt. There's nothing that's so dominant. As I said, everything needs to be integrated in the dish. So there's nothing so dominant that you really should have any sort of problems. Okay, so then they're starting to cook down bits. You just want to get a bit of Maillard reaction on there. So Maillard happens between 120 and 160. It's the thing that, that makes us kind of crave. Beyond that, you get caramelization. So it's a very small window. And it can, it's one of those things that's that sear on the outside of meat. It's when you put some brown on the vegetables. It's the kind of stuff that you really want. It's that, it's that nice smell that you guys are in prime position to start getting. I'm slightly worried about you when I start putting in the Sichuan festival. <laughs> you might want to move. Actually, I might, I might do it over here a bit more. So actually, let me see if I can Um, 
uh, was hosting me and we got so carried away talking and I very carefully made this, this uh, dressing for this fiery crab and sardine dish that I was doing and I was really, you know, really diligent and it's an opera is quite a big deal, it's like quite one of the, you know, the fancy pants things, there's Jose Pizarro and Prune and all these kind of things, what the fuck am I doing here? Um, and uh, so I'm standing there and we're chatting and I proudly present my dish at the end and it's all gone well and I haven't set anything with light or anything like that and uh, then I wake up at four o'clock in the morning and go, oh my god, the dressing! <laughs>
the um, one of the good ways to make sure you do a really good pairing with chocolate and cheese, by the way, is just hold it in your mouth for a little bit, just to let the uh, fats dissolve on your tongue. And then drink a bit of the dunkle rice. <coughs> and both of us, like, like little children, our eyes popped open and just went, oh my god, it's banoffee pie! <laughs> Seriously, it's banoffee pie, try it. Try it with pretty much any dunkle rice. Any dunkle rice that has like that banana-y aspect to it, and it's got that little bit of chocolate. I swear to God, if you have that with cheap, white chocolate, it would taste like, it would taste like a pie, and it's rough, and it's silly, and it's one of those things that you can, you know, it's kind of party trick kind of territory really, isn't it? You can, you can have fun with it. So yeah, so that, that would be my, my suggestion, is actually think of the dish as a whole, don't just think of it as the open parts, because it's one of the things, right? Anybody else got questions? It doesn't just have to be on cooking by the cooking and pairing, by the way. Like the universe, anything? <laughs>
spoiling the veggies today because you all, you tend to get a bit ignored at those so, at food demos, I find. So you guys are getting a spoil today. I think you're getting a little dish to yourself. But however, if you would be kind enough to take a couple of spoons with you as well and share with some of your neighbours, I'm sure that they'd definitely appreciate it. Okay. Right, so vegetarians, would you like to come forward and purchase your dish? Isomerization, we get isoalpharases, and when we get isoalpharases, we get business. 
saying. It's not much fun. Right. I'm going to start putting some of the uh, some of the quick pickles on the uh, little buns that have been lovingly prepared by my awesome assistants over there. Or I should say, the very hard work working people who are working here to make your event much better than my assistants. I'm just shag them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there we go. You put some. You can choose whether you can take the uh, the big cucumber and seaweed or the pickled onions. <laughs> Thank you. 